Okay, this is a 12 volt lead acid battery desulfator circuit made with an N channel MOSFET uh, 555 IC. And what else is in here? A bunch of uh, inductors, which I had to make. I made these two inductors right here. I had some ferrite cores laying around. And the only problem was I made them. And the values were set exactly what they wanted, which was a 1,000 and a 220. And after the circuit ran for a little bit, it must have done something to the core. I don't know what it did, but it must have rearranged the particles in there or something because... I checked the values again later and they dropped by like 20%. So if something happened to that core for the saturation and stuff, it affected the value. But after it ran once, I re rewound it again with the proper values and the values have since not changed. And now they work fine. And I got a little socket here for the 555 IC. This switch right here, all this does is disconnect pin 3 so you could put a um, oscilloscope which I did on pin 3 and you could check out the waveform and adjust the pulse width and the pulse spacing if your pulse spacing is too close or your pulse width is too wide then you're going to overheat either one of the uh, diodes the capacitor or the MOSFET right here now I play with this a lot to get it to work properly and now it does work good this capacitor right here it's supposed to be a low ESR, which refers to the resistance of the capacitor. A low resistance, otherwise it'll heat up. But I did use a low ESR, and it, it does get very warm, which, according to the person that made this uh, circuit here, says it's supposed to get warm. And this MOSFET gets very warm. I ran it for like six to eight hours on a battery that would not take a charge higher than like 12.9. And after I did that with this circuit it now charges up to 13.9 so it, it did make a difference if you get sulfation in the battery basically it's like getting the lead plate and spray painting one side of it now the acid cannot interact with the plate and that's how it gets clogged up so what this circuit does it, put, it puts out high voltage spikes into the lead acid battery and that breaks up that coating which is like a crystalline like a crust that's on top of the lead plates allowing the chemical reaction to take place and then you could fully charge it up so it does work I tested it I was skeptical but it does work and that's the bottom I put a lot of uh, all these spots here where I jumped these were all like these aren't ridiculous soldering spots some of these characters like to email me say, oh these soldering is horrible I did this purposely this is like a 14 gauge wire under here coming from the inductor and I made sure it was really on there and the wires here between the inductors and the capacitor and the MOSFET have to be a higher gauge wire. So I ran two, two layers of bus wire. You can see where it's thicker, right through here. So that's all intentional. But it does work. Just hook this up to your battery, plus, minus, and hook up like a 2 amp charger and just let it sit. And while this thing is working, it'll be uh, charging at the same time with the uh, battery charger. I got this schematic from, it says Lorang Engineering Services, and the website was, let's see, get this, home.comcast.net, D-D-E-N-H-A-R-D-T, just uh, Google all this stuff here if you want to find it. I don't know where I got this from. I couldn't find it. You have to just go searching for it. But, good circuit. Build one. Not easy, because you have to, if you don't get these inductors just right, this diode will overheat, and, if, you, and if, if that's not the problem, then the MOSFET will overheat. So these have to be exact, right around that range of 1,000 and 220.